May I speak in the name of the Holy One, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. I thought long and hard about what I wanted to preach about for this Sunday. I almost preached a very heady metaphor comparing Halloween costumes to a sociological analysis of Christian discipleship. And while I think there are some good ideas in there, that's not what God ultimately called me to share this morning. What I do want to talk about this morning is joy, plain and simple. After all, Halloween is an excuse to play and express frivolous joy. Oops. Right. It's about having fun, not wearing glasses. It's about having fun. It's about dressing up and being silly for no reason other than having fun. Halloween, a.k.a. All Hallows' Eve, historically was a religious and spiritual festival. It was intended to ward off ghosts and death, but also mark the end of the harvest season and the beginning of the cold and darkness. For most of us here, I would wager that it is now a rather superficial event, purely fun and joyful, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with choosing to participate in superficial fun, because playfulness has supremely spiritual benefits. In our often dark and gloomy world, in the stress of our daily lives and the burdens we carry, we need a little light and playfulness. We need to step out of our ordinary rhythms and do something a little extraordinary, no matter how superficial that act is. To step out of our routines is fun and exciting. Along my spiritual journey, the phrase, playfulness is a spiritual power, was made known to me by a wise and dear spiritual friend. And it's one that I truly cherish and captures something profoundly important to me. Playfulness is a spiritual power. And it's one we all know kids have the closest access to. Kids know how to play and have fun in their lives. It's intuitive and they know how to build friendships based on play. They live in this thin space between heaviness and lightness where deeply meaningful things are right up next to deeply meaningless things. In other words, they're capable of experiencing intense emotions about their lives, but they're also capable of being silly and finding joy in superficial places. And it can be really hard for us as adults to think like a kid again, to allow ourselves to live in that thin space and get out of the heavy space and move ourselves back towards the middle, to allow our imaginations to come alive again. On Halloween, we see this aspect of childlike wisdom come to light. There is joy in playfulness. Little children love to play, as we all know, but they really love when adults play. Playfulness and joy are so important to cultivate and very important to our spiritual well-being, and kids are our wisest teachers on this matter. Speaking of wisdom, your kids are very smart. I've had the absolute joy of spending the last several Sundays in youth church with your kids, and I'm so grateful to be here in this church. I've been your associate now for three months, and I've experienced so much joy here, truly. And I thought, in the spirit of joy, I would share what I got to witness last Sunday in youth church. Some of the youth church kids will recognize this. 
So I've been teaching the kids about being a church and what that means literally in terms of the building and participating in ministries, but also spiritually in terms of theology and behaviorally in terms of being the body of Christ. And last Sunday, I asked the group to answer the question, what is the body of Christ? And here's what they said. It brought me a lot of joy, and I thought it might bring you some joy, too. Isn't this absolutely remarkable? Kindness, assuming the best in people, good sportsmanship, loyalty, self-confidence. Isn't this just remarkable? How many of us can learn something from this list? I wonder. Put away my props. As I said before, kids are wise, and I think as adults we can forget this. Sometimes we assume we're smarter because we have more years on the earth, but Jesus was pretty clear that children have wisdom about the kingdom of heaven, that they can lead us into the promised land, and that we can get there too, only by being like little children. This is my favorite concept in the whole Bible, and it's why I love working with kids so much and why I truly am ministered by them. They are wise. They live in that thin place that as adults, we desperately need to get back to. Being here at St. Barnabas has already brought me so much joy, and I'm so excited to continue in ministry here with you all. And it's not just the older kids in youth church. I've had the great joy of spending time with your children at two movie nights, assisting Marnus with our first two chorister rehearsals, getting to know the altar guild, the children ministry leaders, liturgical leaders, and I've found so much joy in ministering with the volunteers at Pacific House and the staff at St. Barnabas, <clears throat> and just this weekend at our, uh, attending our diocesan convention with your wardens, Sarah and David, this church is full of joy, and I can't wait to spend more time with more of you in the years to come. As Christians, our joy is deeply rooted in the person of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. We are blessed by Jesus Christ in the flesh and in the spirit, who is with us and around us always. We have a God who helps the suffering that other people ignore. Our God tends to us when we are in dark places. We have a God who raises up children as teachers. That is worth celebrating. Our God has given us the gospel of joy so that we can experience it and share it with the world. Sometimes we are the only gospel a person will ever read. Our actions are powerful, and choosing joy and playfulness is a gospel text that our world needs so bad right now, that our neighbors and our loved ones need right now. <clears throat> Proverbs eight twenty nine to 31 says, Then I was beside him, like a master worker, and I was daily his delight playing before him always, playing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Whether or not you celebrate Halloween, friends, may you find joy, may you find playfulness. And remember, it might be in a silly place, but there is profound joy in those places too. Amen. Please stand as you're able. Now, using the form found on page 358, let us proclaim with joy our.
faith using the words of the Nicene 